Debbie Price is going to come and join me for our offertory. And she's saying that Gail has to sing too. Gail has to sing too. Yes, we have words. Yeah, that uh, Debbie decided to do this when she walked in today and saw the song on the order of service. <laughs> And this is a song, well, John Prine says the best campfire song for organ don donation that there is. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me, you know I am not shy. I will sing just about anything, but I don't know this song. So I'm <laughs> going to defer to you, darling. <laughs> well, I've never sang with Charlie before, so we'll just see how it goes. <laughs> but it's a, see, we're going to overcome our fears. <laughs> it, it ain't Bach. <laughs> but it does have one of the greatest opening lines ever written. Yeah. Woke up this morning, put on my slippers, walked in the kitchen and died. And oh, what a feeling when my soul went through the ceiling and up into heaven I did rise. When I got there, they did say, John, it happened this way. You slipped upon the floor and hit your head. And all the angels say, just before you pass away, these were the very last words that you said. Please don't bury me down in the cold, cold ground. I'd rather have them cut me up and pass me all around. Throw my brain in a hurricane, the blind can have my eyes, and the deaf can have both my ears if they don't mind the size. Give my stomach to Milwaukee if they run out of beer. Put my socks in a seated box and get them out of here. Venus to Milo can have my arms. Well, I've got your nose. Sell my heart to the junk man and give my love to Rose. But please don't bury me down in the cocoa ground. No, I'd rather have them cut me up and pass me all around. Throw my brain in a hurricane. The mine can have my eyes. And the deaf can have both my ears if they don't mind the size. Give my feet to the footloose, a careless, fancy free. Give my knees to the needy, don't pull that stuff on me. Hand me down my walking cane, and it's a sin to tell a lie. Send my mouth way down south and kiss myself goodbye. Please don't bury me down in the cocoa ground. I'd rather have them cut me up and pass me all around. Throw my brain in a hurricane, but then I can have my eyes. And death can have both my ears if they don't mind the size. <laughs> When I was a kid, they had movies called The Living Dead. There was Night of the Living Dead, Return of the Living Dead, The Son of the Living Dead, The Living Dead Come Into Your Living Room. It was, seemed like every month or so there was a new Living Dead movie that I had to run out to and see and and of course these movies had monsters they were scary things that came up out of the the ground and they just uh, would be zombies and they would chase you and and I don't know why anybody was afraid of the living dead because they're chasing you and they're going about this fast <laughs> you know you you could really walk away from the living dead you gotta say hey yeah, yeah. 
you know, they were zombies. And I, I kind of feeling like your zombie preacher this morning because I was on a bus at 4 a.m. yesterday uh, going to Washington, D.C. I marched for a while and came back and I was in bed by 1 and turned back the clock and it was 12 and so I got that extra hour of sleep. So I'm doing okay, but a little bit like your zombie preacher today on Halloween. But the living dead, the people that are with us still. Traditionally in Halloween, or before it was called Halloween, in the pagan holidays in Europe, they would say that this was the time of year where the veil between the land of the living and the land of the dead was the thinnest. And so some people would do things that would invite the ancestors in. Other people would do things that would keep the ancestors away, like jack-o'-lanterns and, and scary things. And, and so it was kind of fearful because, you know, we know the people, we know some of the people who lived before. Some of them like us and some of them don't. And some of us haunt us and some of them inspire us. And so... Some of them are famous, and I think we have a couple famous Unitarian Universalists here. We have two Susan B. Anthony's, if they would stand. And I'm uh, Henry David Thoreau. You might recognize me from the website. <laughs> and... and and there's other inspirational people here. Elvis is in the building. <laughs> yeah. And, and there's these people who are no longer with us in their bodily form. We can't have a conversation with them in words over coffee, but we are in conversation with them all the time. And whenever we consider what, what is it like, what does it mean to have equal rights for women, what does it mean to be civil disobedience? So yesterday when they rerouted us past the White House and wouldn't let us go down Pennsylvania Avenue but a block north on the other side of Lafayette Park, you know, part of me said, gee, we could r rush the barriers. And then I said, then I'd be arrested and I could be just like Thoreau but I opted to dress like him and be here this morning. <laughs> um, and one of the most moving things yesterday was the number of signs for Paul Wellstone. And it was just, it was such a tragedy, but you saw the tragedy just transformed. So many people who were had signs and said, I'm marching for Paul. And it was just one of the things that moved, because he was one of the few people who had the courage to vote against the war while he's in a tough election. And, um, and there's one of the people that I just admire for the courage to be out there with his beliefs. and. Uh, Admired even in the paper by Jesse Helms, who said he had the courage to be out there with his beliefs. And though they despised each other 12 years ago when they met each other, they learned to work with each other on issues such as health care for, uh, for mental health care bill. They wrote a bill together and, and say, if Paul Wellstone and Jesse Helms can get along, this world has hope if we really, <laughs> if we really look at it. And, and then there's just the living dead that are the accident of why we're here, whether we're Native American or immigrant by this past generation or generations gone. I don't even know the names of the people, my people who came to this country. But they made a decision. and. I'm an American because of some accident of birth that was a conscious decision of some living dead 
these people who have influenced my life and I don't even know their names. So the living dead are not the zombies that come to get us, but they're all those people, known and unknown, the whole wave of humanity that inspires us and sometimes haunts us in giving us assumptions and, and beliefs that we've inherited or that we are reacting against. But the living dead, the dead are with us still. Please join with me in reading, I think it's 721. There is time at the end of this to mention the names of people who have inspired you. And so I just wanted to let you know as we begin that if you want to say the name of somebody at the end, we'll just have a moment of quiet and people say the name sitting from their seat where they are. In the struggles we choose for ourselves and the way we move forward with our lives and bring our world forward with us. We share a history with those lives. We belong to the same motion. Those who lived before us, who struggled for justice and suffered injustice before us, have not melted into the dust, have not disappeared. Their words remind us and call us back to ourselves. Their courage and love evoke our own. We, the living, carry them with us. We are their voices, their hands, and their hearts. I'm going to sit in silence and mention names of those who mean a lot to us.
these names and many more and many more unnamed or even unknowable. May they carry us forth into the future. And light candles of hope, candles that will tell us who we will be in the future, what we want, ways that the world will be a better place. Please come forward and light a candle of hope. Um, I'm Austin Schmidt, and I have a joy that the um, that the sniper was caught, and I have, um, I forgot to say it um, on the fear on the hope I mean the candles of fear, and um, I'm I'm sad for all the um, victims of the sniper, the 13 I think victims of the sniper. <coughs> I have a hope that um, our team, our football team, goes all the way to Florida. Our fellowship choir participated in a choir sing yesterday at Eno River. I have hope for the world when you have over 200 people singing in harmony, and it sounds that beautiful. We were all there, we had fun, and we sounded great. Let me address this too. <laughs> now, those of you who know me know I speak without prejudice or without bias. So what I tell you is the truth. Of the 10 choirs that sang last night, our choir was without a doubt the finest and the best in the, t in the entire district. <laughs> <laughs> they sang with beauty and joy and dignity and talent and it was a wondrous to behold I'm Michelle Swanson and my husband and I celebrated our ninth anniversary on Thursday and I'm just very grateful that I have such an incredibly strong marriage and therefore an incredibly strong family. Which includes you. <laughs> I light a candle for the over 100,000 people who marched on Washington yesterday and it ain't over. <laughs> I met UUs from eight states in the District of Columbia. Um, I couldn't be there. But I sort of wanted to go. But uh, I hope that the war on Iraq does not happen. Because we're just going to kill more innocent people who shouldn't deserve to die for one man's actions. After 33 years with a cigarette habit, I've been 33 days without. And I hope. <laughs> and I hope I can continue it. I had a, a situation last week. I, I went to Santee Cooper catfishing, and I caught some of the biggest catfish I'd ever caught. While I was on the lake, my wife told me that a tree had fallen from my neighbor's yard into our cars and my trucks and so forth. Thus, when I got home, you know, I had to deal with the insurance agent. And the agent says to me, well, Mr. Lawing, we have deemed this an act of God. And we are not going to pay you a red cent. And I said, sir, I said, what if I told you I were an atheist? <laughs> How would you react? He said, then we would call it an act of nature. 
I said, then tell me one thing that happens in life that is not an act of nature. I've got a fight on my hands and I'm going to win. <laughs> I've lit a candle of hope that the assistant superintendent for the Winston-Salem Forsyth County Schools will indeed, when our committee meets with him on Thursday, agree to actually ask the students in, their, in our schools what inappropriate words they hear, who says them, and if anyone intervenes, and gather the data that we need to have in order to act. Hi, I'm Jim Campbell, and this is an auspicious uh, service because just this week I had a note from the living dead, or I prefer to call it karma. I received a package from Japan and this was a very beautiful package and it had beautiful Buddhist stamps on it and it was just magnificently uh, done up. Inside was a book and I thought it was sent to me by some medical publisher because it was a book on pelvic tumors. I know anything about it by a guy by the name of uh, Takahashi. Well, Dr. Takahashi was a resident of my father's way back in the 60s when in those days to train a Japanese resident in the United States was almost unheard of and uh, there was a lot of prejudice going on, but Dad ignored all those sort of things and trained who he wanted. Well, Dr. Takahashi had dedicated this, do this book to my father, who is over 22 years deceased at this point. And it was a beautiful reminder um, that one's karma does go on. And uh, it was the uh, return of that. He sent books to not only to myself, but to my three other siblings, my two sisters, sisters and brothers. A year ago, Dylan, my son Dylan and I uh, started studying karate as a means of us spending more time together, and that's been a wonderful joy in and of itself. But yesterday, we both competed in our first karate tournament, and Dylan left the tournament with two gold medals. On the other hand, I left the tournament with a busted lip and a bleeding nose. <laughs> what I got out of the tournament was a renewed awareness that I take shots a whole lot better than I give them. <laughs> but we're going to keep doing this. It's been a bunch of fun. Um, I have a joy that my brother's vars um, varsity football team made it to the playoffs, and um, I hope they win. Good morning. My name is David. I'm the ghoul unmasked. Um, last week I was up here asking people to think good thoughts about a doctor who is going to perform cataract surgery in my left eye. Well, I'm proud to say that I don't wear glasses anymore and I have 20-20 vision in my left eye at a distance. So I'll still need reading glasses, but for all those who thought about me, thank you. This candle is for Stephen J. Gould, who was a personal friend of mine, but he died in the spring, which some people may know. And I'm just glad that he wrote all those beautiful things. He was in love with life. He was drunk on life. He was, he wrote several books because he probably couldn't help but write the books. But um, when people like that pass on, you still miss them, but you're glad that they wrote all those things down for you to enjoy. Okay, this candle is lit by Tiana, who has been coming to what she calls torch, which is her word for the church is torch, which I think given the candle is pretty great. We're lighting it for two reasons. One is for Tiana, who has her first wiggly tooth after seeing all of her friends and family get wiggly teeth, and also for her sister Miranda, who competed yesterday in a gymnastics tournament and won fifth place for nine-year-olds. Even though she's only eight, she's competing with nine-year-olds because of where her birthday is, and she won fifth place. Yay. 
I'm Shirley Stipe Zendel, and you haven't heard much from me lately because I'm commuting to UNC Chapel Hill in the Masters of School Administration program. And on the weekends, I just want to sit quietly, either at home often or here sometimes. Um, but what, what I'm really happy about is that the program there is really about fighting social injustice and economic inequality. We do a lot of exercises on learning about race relations and what we can do to improve things. On Tuesday, in one of my classes, we're going to do a presentation on homeless youth and what people can do to help homeless youth. And although I'm not a Republican and I don't embrace No Child Left Behind entirely, I do want to say that I've learned that one of the aspects of that law is that um, a homeless liaison has to be appointed for each school district. And I want to think about John Lee Malvo today, who was a homeless youth. And my prayer, and I do believe in prayer, and if you read the latest UU magazine, there's a whole article about that controversy there, um, which helps to empower me to talk about the fact that I do believe in prayer. I pray for John Lee Malvo, who was a homeless youth, who was in school in Bellingham, Washington. No one really has come forward to say they remember much about him except that he sat in the library a lot. On Tuesday, my daughter Patterson, whose birthday is today, <laughs> and who was a homeless youth for a short period of time back in 1992, will be going with me to Chapel Hill to talk to the 17 people in our Masters of School Administration cohort about what it was like to be a homeless youth. And I just ask you to think about that and talking about where we're going and what we will be, we are finally starting to address even those people who have been on the margin. We're making progress. I lit my candle of hope for our children, um, the the children here in RE plus my own child. Um, they they are a big part of my hope. Whenever I'm feeling um, sad or overwhelmed, I think about our kids, or I walk in the door on Sunday morning, and I'm greeted by their faces, by their smiles, by their laughter, and I see the 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 gifts that they have, and. Um, I think that there can't be anything but hope. After lots and lots of hard work, I've finally made it the AB Honor Roll. These hopes, we talk at Halloween a lot about spirits and evil spirits, but we have something in this room that fights them all, and I think it's embodied in our closing song, Spirit of Life. Let us sing 123 and bring that positive energy to us and carry it with us as we leave this place.